What's up, my friends? Today, we're gonna talk about, okay, it's the perfect time of the year to do it. What the heck should you be doing right now as we wrap up the year in terms of reviewing, recapping, and planning? That's what we're gonna cover to springboard you into an amazing 2024. What's happening, my fearless networking friend, Todd Falcone here. We are in the last week of the year, and this is a really great time of the year to focus on like a year-end review, kind of looking back, looking at what you did great, areas for improvement. Uh, this is like a really special week, at least it is for me, like this last I don't know, the last seven to 10 days of the year, um, I do a lot of reviewing, a lot of recapping, a lot of goal setting and planning for the new year. It's just a perfect time of the year to do it. So I think it's certainly a lot better than just kind of ending the year and you know, you finish the year, the year's done, and then you go to the next year and you don't even have any plans in the, in the new year. So um, I just want to talk to you guys for a little bit about, um, you know, just some strategies to think about. So number one would be I mean, the truth is numbers don't lie, okay? So, like, look at look at your numbers. Look at your sales figures. Look at your recruiting numbers. Uh, look at your customer acquisition numbers. Where do you need to improve? Um, you know, what did you do well at? Uh, where do you need to make improvements on? Uh, if your check, I mean, this is pretty, pretty straightforward in terms of, like, the numbers not lying. If you look at, uh, you know, your business right now, the state of your business at the end of the year, and it's not, you know, there's not much to show for it. One of the numbers that you really need to look at is, are you in the game or are you sitting on the sidelines? Because there's a lot of people that honestly, they, they, they kind of lie to themselves into believing that they're being super active in their business. They might be doing some stuff in their business, but the reality is they're really kind of, you know, doing a lot of busy work and not the, not, the, not the things that matter the most. And you guys have, most of you guys have plugged into me for a long enough period of time. You know what matters most. It's exposures, it's invites, it's you know, putting stuff out there, pre presenting, you know, presenting your product, presenting your business, getting, you know, doing presentations or using your tools that are more likely doing the presentations for you. Um, but uh, you know, I just think it's a great idea for number one, to just look at, look at your overall numbers and it's a great time of the year to just to be honest with yourself and kind of review that stuff. Number two would be, you know, um, strategy scrutiny. It's almost like <laughs> strategy scrutiny. I don't know if I can say that three times in a row. Where you look at what are the things, like what strategies do did you apply during the year? Did you do, I don't know, uh, a Facebook live strategy? Did you, have a, did you have a real strategy? Did you have some kind of lead generation strategy? Did you have some kind of specific means or way of doing something in evaluating how those, you know, how those worked out for you. Like if you, for example, started a, I don't know, let's say a Facebook live strategy in 2023 and you were, you know, it wasn't something you were doing on the regular, but you started doing it and you, you started doing it two, three, four times a week and you're doing different short Facebook lives as an example, you know, what kind of numbers did you did you see did you, you did you see an increase in your numbers and your viewers? Uh, did you see an increase in leads that were coming in, uh, or did it remain flat the whole time? I mean, chances are that if just just doing Facebook Lives consistently, you might have only a couple people the first time you ever do a Facebook Live, and then you have a few more the next time, and a few more the next time. Uh, but if 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 for example you did do that particular strategy as an idea and your numbers were flat or went down, then you have to really look at the content and what you were putting out there. And are you putting out there content that people wanna watch, that they wanna listen to? So again, this whole time of the year, this is a great time for you to be reviewing and recapping, and you definitely wanna take a look at your strategies as well. Another place that we can all improve and a great time of the year now, I don't I think there's I think any time of the year is good for this, which is taking a look at your skill sets. You know, what you know, what what areas do you excel in and what areas do you need improvement in? One of the things that I've done with some of my coaching groups is I will have them uh, evaluate themselves on 
uh, all the different things that we do in network marketing, like inviting, following up, uh, being able to answer questions, and overcome objections, uh, launching team members, and I, I won't go through the whole list, and then you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, one I suck at it, and 10 I'm amazing at it. And, you know, and then asking her, let's say you gave yourself a six on an inviting on your skill with inviting somebody to take a look at your business. And you're like, okay, so I'm a six. So that's kind of a D. If we're going to look at the way we rated each other, we got grades in school, like six was 60 to 69 as a, a D, a 70 to 79 as a C and so on. And let's say, I don't think you really want to be a D in that core category. I don't think you want to be a D in any of the categories, but let's say you gave yourself a rating of a D, then you need to ask yourself, okay, well, um, what do I need to do to improve my skill set there? And then things that you have control over, of course, and then, you know, taking actionable steps towards uh, improving. Because, like, again, and I've used this example so many times in different trainings where, like, I'll go to the driving range of the golf course and I watch other guys practice and I can always see somebody who is very intentional with how they're practicing because they really are there to not just whack a bunch of balls, you know, down range, but because they want to improve the ball contact and, and, you know, just simply play better golf versus a guy that comes up. And the first thing he does is he whips out his driver and he starts doing full swings on his driver and topping it and dead missing it and whatever they're doing to it. And, you know, I can just see the difference. Like some people will show up and, you know, they have their, 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 it's almost like they're there to improve upon the skill, but they're really not intentionally improving upon the skill. They're just going through the motions. And there's a distinct difference between intentional practice and then just going through the motions. So that's another thing I would really encourage you guys to do this week, this, you know, as we wrap up 2023 and move into 2024. So as we look ahead into 2024, uh, you know, this is a great time of the year, not after the first, but, you know, right now, if you haven't done it already, setting some goals and, you know, what, what are your objectives for the first quarter? What are your objectives for the first month? What do you want to have accomplished by the end of the year? And you know, I think it's important to uh, create and create goals that you can reach that are within your grasp. But they're just, I mean, they, they force you to reach. In other words, they force you to really kind of go out. You have to go an, an extra, a little, little extra step in order to get it. Because, like, I mean, an example, like, let's say, <clears throat> let's say your goal is, like, I want to get to a grand, uh, a grand a month. And let's say we're doing an income goal. <clears throat> I want to get to $1,000 a month by the end of 2024. That's a pretty low goal. You know, I mean, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's easily achievable, quite frankly, right? Uh, versus you're like, hey, I want to get to a million dollars a month by the end of 2024. That's probably outside of your grasp, depending on, you know, where you are. I mean, if you're making 900 a month right now, getting to a million a month isn't as big of a stretch. Uh, but you're making $10 a month and you're looking to uh, get yourself to 100,000 a month. That's a pretty big stretch. So, is, is it possible? I mean, with it, it's possible. Uh, is it regular? Is it the norm? No, it's not. So I think the, the key thing is, number one, you do take the time to write down and strategize and, and figure out what your activity goals are, what your business goals are, your personal goals, fitness goals, spiritual goals, whatever those are with specific timelines and, and make sure that you, uh, you can, you can reach them because a lot of times when, when you, if you set only large goals, this is a, this is a problem. It's like a mindset, uh, issue. It ends up, it ends up messing with your head is what happens. If you, if the only thing that you do is set these ridiculously big, what do they call them? Big audacious goals or whatever. So I'm, I'm, I'm escape, the term's escaping me. Be hag goals, big, I don't know, whatever they are. I think it was Brian Tracy or, is it Zig Ziglar, one of those guys that I don't know, big whatever. You guys, you guys get the drift. If if the only thing that you're setting is these monstrous goals, which are it's not a bad idea to set really big goals. You know, you want to you want to reach for something, but if the only thing you have are these really huge goals and you don't have shorter interim reachable goals, like I like the way I phrased it many times is is you want to have many many victories. So that umpteen times, many, many victories. You want to have a lot of small victories because each little victory, each like achievement, oh, I got it. Cool. Boom. Oh, I got this one. Cool. It like feeds you versus, you know, you had this one gigantic goal, which is great to have, but you don't have interim goals and you're kind of disappointed until you get to that goal because you haven't gotten that goal. So that's what I'm talking about with the whole kind of mindset letdown part of that. So definitely, you know, take a little time. <clears throat> it surprises me, honestly. 
when I speak at different places and I talk to people, if they're being brutally honest, there's a lot of people in our business that don't set any goals. They just kind of go through the motions. And it's like, how, it's like I don't even know, how, how do you, uh, uh, I mean, I suppose you could make some progress, but I think you'd be making a lot better progress if you really actually took the time to, to write down this stuff. Number two, as we move into uh, the new year, like, you know, you want to craft a killer strategy. <clears throat> What's your strategy? Is your strategy, like, what is it? Like, do you, do you, have you, ha do you have it written out? Like, what's, what's your plan of attack? You know, like, get, this is a, this is a terrible way of doing business. Is I get up and I, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. It is whatever, however the day is going to unfold, it's going to unfold. And it's just, you know, if you don't have a strategy, you're going to be shooting from the hip. That's not really a good, you know, a, a good thing. Uh, better for you to go, okay, well, cool. I'm going to, I'm committing to doing, you know, uh, 10 reach outs every single day that I'm showing up in my business, a Facebook live every, every day, consistent with my Instagram post, uh, you know, a TikTok, whatever, whatever things that you're on, but like have like a written down strategy and then you can just follow the strategy. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's like, okay, I have a plan. It's like it, the phrase, what is it? Uh, if you, if you fail to plan, you kind of plan to fail, Right. So, and the other thing is, if you fail to plan, this is, and you know this already, if you, if you don't have any kind of plan and you're just kind of just, I don't know, floating through life, somebody's going to call you or reach out to you and they're going to figure out a way to make you part of their plan. And I promise you, in most cases, the plan that they have for you is not nearly as good as the plan that you'd have for you if you took the time to make the plan. So craft, taking the time to craft an incredible strategy, a killer strategy is going to be very useful for you. And of course, you want to expand your arsenal. Uh, what, what do you need to learn? What do you need to understand? What skill set do you need to improve upon? Like, for example, like this, the last, I don't know, it's been at least 12 months and it's been going on for a while. But, you know, I would definitely say that the year 2023 was the year like AI became super present in our space where, you know, the general public began to have access to a lot of these AI tools. And so, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think the percentage of people, I haven't done any kind of research study on it, but just based on my, you know, constant communication with people, there are definitely people that are using AI, but there's a lot of people that haven't even taken the first step. And there's a lot of, I mean, I'm not saying this is, this is the one thing that you need to, you know, jump into, but it can certainly make your life a lot easier. It can certainly help you produce better content. And there's some crazy stuff that's happening. And I think you're, honestly, I think you're foolish if you're not somehow incorporating artificial intelligence that's now available to us uh, into your business building strategy. Now, is, is AI going to make prospecting calls for you and close business for you? Maybe not yet. Uh, maybe in the future. I don't know. But uh, but it can certainly help you do a lot of things. So just kind of take take a peek at like where you know where are, how's my arsenal? Where where do I need to make improvements in my arsenal? And then you know start taking action on those steps and and getting yourself better rather than I don't know. You're uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of something real quick. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Let's say, let's say you're okay. okay I m mentioned Facebook before. So let's say you're, you're on Facebook and you want to do a better job of creating engaging posts on Facebook. Um, well, how, how I, I can just keep trying and trying and trying to try to be more engaging, or I can really kind of look at other engaging posts. I'm going to spend some time doing some R and D, some research and development, looking what other people are doing, what's working on Facebook now versus what worked on Facebook five years ago, starting to, you know, apply those things and, uh, okay, I did this post and it worked out really good. That style of post. Uh, okay, I'm going to continue to do that. Or man, every time I do this type of post, it's like crickets. I barely get any, anybody, but let, just look across all the things that you do in the business. And this is a great time to be, you know, expanding on that arsenal. Number four on this is, you know, bu building a stronger network, right? So th th your list is your business. The, how your list feels about you uh, impacts your business. So this is something that that's, that's, I would say, one of my specialties and one of the things that I do a lot of teaching on the whole concept and idea of nurturing your list and, you know, building relationship capital and, you know, uh, be a good time of the year right now to be looking at, okay, well, what can I do as I move into this new year uh, to be 
in, you know, to be in a greater list building cap, you know, relationship capital building mode so that the people that I'm connected to have a different feeling about me. And if they have a better, different feeling about me, they have more warmness towards me. They're more likely to want to do business with me. So um, you'll see as we move into 2024 that um, I'm doing just that with a, a lot of my content and a lot of my marketing, you're going to see a distinct difference as we move into uh, the new year um, in terms of the, the value that I'm putting out to my audience on a more consistent basis than I did in 2023. My content strategy has been pretty much the same the last few years. Like as far as like things like this, like a blog post or YouTube, it's like once a week, boom, it goes out every Monday, uh, unless it's like a major holiday, but that's generally speaking what we do. Um, and then some supporting content around that, but we've had some meetings and, and that's definitely, that's definitely something that I'm doing personally. And, and you're going to, uh, when you do that, you're just going to see, a, you're going to see a better impact in your business. And number four is, man, you got to stay on your toes. Like if, if we, you know, you got to be willing to adapt. You got to be willing to pivot. Uh, there's crazy, the world's crazy place right now. Uh, I'm not even talking about politics. There's a, lot, there's, a, there's a lot of change, a lot of stuff going on. And we all had to pivot in 20 and 21. Okay. That was a forced pivot. You know, for those of you, for example, that were doing in homes and sit downs and all that. And, you know, believe it or not, there's a lot of people that still get together with people. I mean, think about your, net, your network marketing company in 20 and 21. You probably didn't even have any regional events. You probably didn't have any national conferences, international conferences, because we're all on lockdown. So then what happened? We had to pivot to, you know, web meeting platforms like Zoom, for example. And, um, you know, I just think it's, it's it, it, hopefully we never have an experience like that ever again, but regardless of uh, what does take place, you gotta be, you gotta be ready. You gotta be agile. It's like, a, uh, I remember Nathan Rick saying this years ago, it's like, you know, you want to be more like a, a, a jet ski, a jet ski can turn on a dime and, and, and like go in a completely different direction versus a cruise ship. You're in a cruise ship and the thing takes forever to take a left or a right turn. You want to be way more like a jet ski and be ready to adapt. And then, and if you're hearing stuff, like I got to say, it's going to go back to the AI thing for a second. I think you want to stay tuned, tuned into what's new and what's happening in AI, because, um, you know, we only, we have all have 24 hours in a given day and it's what we do with that time that makes the biggest difference. And so if you can figure out ways to use tools and technology, uh, new, new things that maybe even haven't, haven't come out yet, but you're will, willing and ready to pivot on that then you've, 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 re you've, you've created more free time for yourself either to have fun or uh, focus that time that would have been kind of busy time and you know, put it into productive time. Because the more hours during a day that you can spend towards you know, producing new business, repeat business, or new business or repeat business, then you're just gonna be in a, you're just gonna, it would, goes to show, you would be in a, in a better state, right? I mean, if you have all this busy work and you have 30 minutes a day to spend on, you know, business building activities versus you have eight hours a day of business building activities, you can clearly see the difference that would make in your business. So anyhow, happy holidays. Here we are at the end of the year. Appreciate you so much for plugging into me. If you're on my YouTube channel, press the subscribe button, get yourself plugged in. If you're on my podcast and listening to me on audio, I love that as well. All the details on this episode and other resources to help you build your direct selling, your network marketing business are right here at toddfalcone.com, episode 252. That's this episode is T-O-D-D-F-A-L-C-O-N-E.com forward slash episode 252. Have an amazing day. We'll see you next time. We'll